I have a few things here I want to share with you. Uh, a few weeks ago I did a video about the space program for the 25th anniversary of the uh, loss of the Space Shuttle Challenger and as it turned out because it took me about a week to do it also the loss of uh, the Space Shuttle Columbia um, and it was about the lethargy I guess you could call it in our manned space program in the United States. I, mean, I was reminded after posting that video of this book that I had I was it was a gift from my mother actually when I was six years old that's how much of a space nut I was this book is called pioneering the space frontier uh, it is an official report of a presidential committee called the National Commission on Space and this is actually a serious legitimate proposal made 25 years ago for the direction our manned space program should take in the United States. Now here we are 25 years later and almost nothing in this book has come to pass. And the few things that are listed in here that, that have come to pass are things that either were already in the pipeline when this was written or have only been achieved in very very altered diluted form. For instance, uh, here's the first page. There are, there are beautiful little illustrations all through this. And this uh, first page has a picture on the top there. That's a, uh, a painting representing what people thought the future of space travel would look like in the 1950s. And there's a uh, sort of a 2001 Space Odyssey style rotating space station with kind of a, a space plane servicing it. And then here is the more accurate version of the future from uh, the perspective of 1986. And there's two space shuttles servicing a space station with the Hubble Space Telescope also in there. And uh, of course, the Hubble Space Telescope did become a reality. It's about to retire, actually. And the space shuttle was already in service. And the space station. Um, Came, came along too, although again in a very different form. If you're a space nut like I am and you can read this and not be just hideously depressed, uh, I don't know what to tell you. But uh, again, reading from 1986, now look where we are. We're still in exactly the same spot that we were, except we have a space station and a space telescope. And God knows we should be grateful every day for that space station and for the incredible discoveries and revelations that have been brought to us by that space telescope. But for Christ's sake, there's shit in here about colonizing the moon, not just going back to the moon and landing again and walking around like we did 40 years ago, but going up there to stay, colonizing the moon, not just traveling to Mars, not just people walking on Mars, but colonizing Mars, living on Mars. And they were serious. Can you imagine? People actually had the balls to write this book. Serious people. Chuck Yeager, Neil Armstrong wrote this book, wrote these proposals. Let's land on Mars. Let's colonize Mars. Let's have people live on Mars. And they put this on the desk of the President of the United States and said, we're fucking serious. In 1986, we're 25 years after this. And today, nobody would take that seriously. That's how pitiful the state of our space program is. That's how reluctant and timid we are to pursue it. That's, that's what has become of our American spirit of exploration, of our fuck American spirit, of our human spirit of exploration. What happened to that? It's 50 years ago, 1961, the President of the United States stood up in front of the entire country, in front of the entire world, and said, we're going to land on the moon by the end of this decade. And when he said that, by the way, we had sent one person into space. It's not like we were well on our way. Kennedy made the challenge. He said, we're going to do this because this is what we do. Because this is the next step. Because we have to do this. Because it's important that we do this. And we all, not we, not me, my parents, my grandparents, that generation, got behind him 
and invented all the shit that did not even exist that we needed in order to fly to the moon in the late 60s. Can you imagine? Color television was still a novelty. Not everybody had a color television. There was no such thing as satellite radio. There was no such thing as cellular phones. Computers filled entire rooms. And we flew to the moon. Twelve people landed on the moon and walked around and came back. Starting in 1969. And 25 years ago, people put this on the desk of a Republican president. Ronald Reagan, revered by his followers today as an enemy of big government. And Reagan's people that he appointed to the National Commission on Space said the government has to play a leading role in the space program. And we need to go back to the moon. And we need to go to Mars. And we need to advance our technology. We need to invent new space vehicles. We need to explore the solar system. Us, human beings, need to explore the solar system in person. Is anybody saying that to our democratic, liberal, big government president today? I mean, it's easy to compare Barack Obama to John Kennedy because they do have a lot in common. They're both very charismatic. They're both incredibly inspiring people. They're both great natural leaders. But the sad part about Obama to me is I, I can't imagine him standing up in front of a crowd, in front of the entire world, and saying what Kennedy said that day in May at Rice University when he said, we're going to the moon or before that when he spoke in front of Congress and he said I believe this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. I've had that memorized since I was five years old. I can't imagine Obama saying anything like that. Not because he's not capable of it, not because he can't muster that kind of rhetoric. He and his speechwriters are more than capable of crafting as stirring a speech as Kennedy's, but because he doesn't care. He sees no reason to. And because we don't care. We're not asking him to do it. You know that when people landed on the moon in the 60s, there were people at NASA who said that we could land on Mars in another 10 years? And they were serious. It wasn't just some idiot shooting his mouth up. They were engineers and scientists, the brilliant, brilliant people who had built the ships and flown people to the moon. After we landed on the moon, they said, next stop Mars, and if we get started right now and we have the backing of the people and the government, we can get to Mars in 10 years, just the same way we got to the moon in 10 years. And here we are in 1986, and a proposal co-written by the first man to land on the moon, Neil Armstrong, along with the first man to fly faster than the speed of sound, Chuck Yeager, saying 17 years after the first Apollo landing, we can still go to Mars. We can go back to the moon. We can do this. We should do this. This is important. And we, we, haven't, we haven't done any of it. The prospect of a permanent lunar colony, the prospect of a manned landing on Mars, never mind a Martian colony. It's more far-fetched today in 2011 than it was in 1986. It's further away now than it was then. And what do you call that if not a disgrace? It's a really interesting book. Um, it's out of print, but it's easy to find. You can, I found this. This actually isn't the original copy that I had when I was a child. Uh, I found this on eBay for literally a couple of bucks. It's out of print, but it's not expensive, and it's not hard to find. And there's also a version of it online. There's a lot of different versions of it online, actually. It doesn't have the graphics, 
because the graphics are copyrighted. The, the actual text is public domain because it's the property of the government. The images are not, uh, so the online versions don't have the images. But you can get the gist of it, and actually uh, you can go to tinyurl.com slash pioneering space to go to what I, what I found to be the best online version of it, uh, the easiest to navigate, if you want to check it out for yourself. I have something else to show you. This is a card I received uh, from Organizing for America. It's a thank you card, a Happy New Year card, uh, from the President, saying thank you for your support and friendship. We made history together in 2010, and I look forward to continuing that work in the weeks and months ahead. Happy New Year from my family to yours, Barack Obama. This uh, is a way for the President's campaign apparatus to suck up to me and make sure that I'm still going to vote for him in 2012, even after the losses in the midterm elections. Well, the president doesn't have to worry, because I'm almost certainly going to vote for him again. I think he's been a good president. But if he really wants to impress me, you should take a look at this. I know that, especially with the, the 100th anniversary of, of Reagan's birth, being just recently. Everybody's been talking about Ronald Reagan and apparently our current president, President Obama, has been taking Reagan as a role model, at least in terms of his persona and his strategy, if not his politics, thank God. If he really wants to emulate Reagan, he can get a copy of Pioneering the Space Frontier and he can make manned space flight once again a national priority for the United States. He can be the first president since Reagan to come out and unapologetically support the space program, the manned space program. He should appoint his, his own National Commission on Space, and he should hand him all a copy of this. He should get on eBay and order himself a, a bunch of copies of this. They're really cheap, Mr. President. You could go out of pocket on it. It wouldn't have to cost the taxpayers anything. And he should say, guys, it's 25 years since Reagan looked at this. We never did shit about it. Let's see what we can do about it now. It's way too late to be shooting for 2035, I think, unfortunately. But 2060? Could we do Mars by 2060? Hell yes if we really wanted to. The question is, do we want to? And if we don't want to, if we can look up at the moon and beyond the moon at Mars and beyond Mars at stars outside of our own solar system, and say to ourselves, those are within our reach. Human feet could walk on their surfaces. Human eyes could view another star up close. That is within the realm of possibility. But we're not going to do it. If that's what we say, what does that say about us? Look at this, painting of a moon base in the 21st century. See that guy? Not just on the moon, but on the moon with a jetpack.